the Mekong River, approaching one of the holy places of Vietnam, the island of Huang. We went to look for the beginnings of peace in Vietnam. Neither side has ever fired at this island. It is the only place we found any peace in Vietnam. This is the only community in South Vietnam without a curfew. And every hour of every day, the members of the sect gather to pray for peace. Island of the Coconut Monk, an island of 6,000 pacifists led by a four and a half foot tall hunchback monk who hadn't lain down since 1932, living in an island commune of 6,000 people who dropped out of the war. They call him the Coconut Monk because he once spent seven years in a coconut tree, vowed to silence, praying for peace. In the center of South Vietnam, where there's nothing but war and turmoil, this man, through very curious, if not, you know, almost uh, laughable measures, has an island where there is pure peace, simple peace. The war is all around the island. Patrol boats circle constantly. Helicopters spray the jungle on both sides of the river. And at night, rockets pass directly overhead. But on the island, the only war is symbolic war. The war the Dao Zua fights with apples and palm leaf grenades. Each day he walks between Saigon and Hanoi. He believes that if you manipulate a symbol for a thing properly, you manipulate the thing itself. It was the only place in Vietnam I ever saw happy people. I was brought there by John Steinbeck IV, the son of the author, and Errol Flynn's son, Sean Flynn, who was a CBS News cameraman. I ended up going down there about seven times during 1969. And that had a profound effect on my thinking, too, to see that it was possible in the midst of this hideous war to just drop out and say, I will not be party to this. And anybody who came to the island of the Coconut Monk without a weapon was welcomed, no questions asked. He had a vision that uh, he uh, was the man who was going to bring peace to Vietnam. As soon as you came into home into view of it, it's kind of weird because you kind of you're out in this brown, muddy Mekong River, and then on the almost on the horizon you see this Disneyland. Across the river you could hear above the kind of the cacophony of river sounds and odd bits of gunfire and bombs. You just hear <laughs> Come ashore it was just totally amazing. We were given a tour of the place and shown around a bit. We started exploring around the little community and already got into the rhythm of the place. Being taken round to the front of this kind of artificial mountain, which was underneath these two mad towers, where this strange old monk fellow was perched overlooking the Mekong. As soon as you saw him, you broke into this big grin because that's what he was doing. There was something that sort of beamed about him. Morality will bring peace to Vietnam, to the world. He was a, a mystical figure. He was strangely affecting. But he had this kind of impish little grin that he had all the time. And you just knew here was a man of peace. He was devoted to John Steinberg. He just thought he was the greatest thing in the world, you know. And, uh, and the next morning, the Dao Yu called the convocation of everybody on the island, I guess a couple of thousand people, I don't know, you know several hundred people. And we were all just giddy. I mean, it was all a goof, you know, 10 pages making cracks, and everybody's making cracks. And, and he lines us up, uh, he put Steinbeck on one side of him and me on the other, and he had his associate, he wrote out a statement. He said, you know, we have come from all these different countries, and we have lived here in peace. Why must there be war? And suddenly it wasn't funny anymore. And we realized the spirituality of these people was, was quite overwhelming. His idea for the island was to build a, uh, 
not just a haven, but a place for uh, negotiations. That's, uh, no, that's pretty wild for a, a monk from Quinoa. We had seen how the politicians and leaders were doing it, basically by killing each other, and the Paris peace talks were bogged down on the shape of the table, for example. The South Vietnamese didn't want the Viet Cong there as a separate delegation, and it just kept going on and on. And in the middle of all this, the coconut monk had a very simple solution that everybody should come to his island and sit down, and he'd, uh, he'd sort us all out. He believed that he could get rationale out of the leaders of the various sides in Vietnam. They were all supposed to come and meditate and then meet on the island and hold fruitful peace talks. To this end, he built this stupendously beautiful weapon. In terms of a table, it was just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. The coconut monk says, no, we need to get this eight-sided table with a yin-yang symbol, which just happens to be, you know, to overlay with the map of Vietnam. And so we thought it was a great idea. What he was trying to do, I think we embraced totally because it was so weird. And because it was weird, it might be possible. The fact that we wandered around with a camera or two cameras or whatever all day long taking pictures to them, they thought that was beautiful because they were gonna, we were going to show the rest of the world how beautiful they were. Okay, put about three in there. It's a hard call to see what covering the war is about because during that time when you actually lived in the war, it doesn't exactly establish a peaceful kind of thread in your, in, in your soul. So to find some place where you can go, where you can meditate, where you can be at peace, and you can think about other things, even if it is for a spasm, before you plunge back into the insanity of Saigon. That's what it gave us, a place which was peace in the middle of a war zone. It was only much later on that I realized what an influence the, the coconut monk had on me. I think it actually saw me through the Vietnam War and everything that's happened to me since. It gave me a philosophy of life, basically accepting the good and the bad. There's a leaf falling in the forest, and it was a beautiful leaf. That's how I look at it. And it's nice to be able to go back and see that leaf again in, in some of its splendor. <laughs>